Hello folks, welcome back to African and Eastern's Path Bar School here in Dubai in a series we're calling Mastering the Martini with Stolashnaya Vodka. Today we're going to take a look at how you can learn to make stirred up drinks with the martini as the vessel for your understanding. The martini is one of the world's most persevering and endearing cocktails, from its origins in the early 1800s with the Martinez, all the way through its evolution to the classic 5 to 1 dry martini of today. We're going to do away with gin in these recipes and concentrate solely on vodka using classic Russian style of vodka, Stolishnaya. It's now made in Latvia from rye and wheat and it's a perfect vodka with flavors of lemon zest, black pepper, and marshmallow creaminess. The martini is what I regard as being the steak of cocktails. Everybody knows when they walk into a restaurant how they want their steak cooked, and it's no different with the martini. So we have to take a little bit of a look at the non clemature in order to make sure we get our customer's order right and exceed their expectations. The first question we're gonna ask is gin or vodka? Today we're going to continue on the line of a vodka martini with the beautiful Stoloshnaya, so we can disregard the gin today and the first question. The second question is would they like it dry or wet? This pertains to how much dry vermouth is in the martini. Do not get confused. Adding more dry vermouth makes it a wetter martini and vice versa. The third question is in regards to garnish. Now, if we're making a dirty martini and adding a little bit of olive brine to it, that may well be three olives on a pick on the side of our glass. We may also choose to use a twist of citrus, most commonly lemon, with the oils expressed across the top. So let's get to making two vodka martinis today. I'm gonna to make one dirty martini simultaneously alongside one classic five to one dry vodka martini. The first thing we're gonna do is fill our mixing glasses and our glasses up with ice because, as we remember from previous videos, cold drinks go in cold glasses. Once we've done that, we can start building our cocktail. One technique we're gonna to learn today is how to stir. Now we may well stir with one hand and dress the ice which is removing all of the water from the outside quickly in this fashion. You may not be so adept at this technique, so I'd recommend starting with a long chopstick. The way we hold our spoon or chopstick is very important. It allows the wrist to maneuver around the side of the glass while not putting too much strain on the arm. If we put the chopstick between the two first fingers like this and anchor it between the thumb, like so, we'll be able to practice with some water until we get good enough to make classic martinis on our own. What we want to do is insert the chopstick down the side of the glass and stir clockwise or counterclockwise following the circumference of the vessel. Once you get good enough you can start to speed up and then even start to use two chopsticks or spoons at the same time. Now when we're making a martini it's all of the really small details put together that make the drink go from being a good cocktail to being a great cocktail. So I'm gonna pick apart those little tiny details as we go and hopefully you can be making some fantastic martinis at home or in the bar. Once we've dressed the ice, we want to top it up just to make sure that we're making our cocktail as cold as possible. You might be asking yourself why we might choose to stir a cocktail versus shake a cocktail. Stirring, as I've covered in other videos, helps to control the dilution and the temperature at an even speed. Shaking a cocktail, on the other hand, is aerating and diluting very quickly while chilling at the same time. When we're making a beautiful martini with a nice, clean, crisp vodka, what we want to do is stir to control the temperature at the same time as the dilution. I'm going to strain off all the water that we stirred off our ice because around about 30% of our stirred cocktail is going to be dilution. We don't want to add that vodka in there at the start and automatically dilute it without it having been chilled. On my left, I'm going to be making a dirty vodka martini. On my right, I'm going to be making a classic dry martini. So I'm going to start as ever with the cheapest ingredients first. 
That being about five mils of olive brine straight out of the jar into our dirty martini, followed by 10 mils of dry vermouth into each preceding drink. Finally, we're gonna add our third and then second ingredient, which will be beautiful Stolishnaya vodka all the way from Latvia. I'm gonna add 50 mils to each drink and then get stirring. The aim of the game is to get these drinks into the glass as soon as possible while being nicely chilled and diluted at the same time. Always remember as you go to be adding more ice just to keep that dilution and temperature dropping. I'm going to use two spoons to stir these drinks at the same time and remembering always the top of the ice should it get too low so we can keep the temperature dropping at the same time as we're diluting the cocktail. Stirring by following the circumference of the inside of the glass and speeding up as and when necessary. Now the easiest way to tell if your cocktail is done, finished, completed, ready for the glass and ready for service is just to give it a quick taste with a straw. We need to think whether we have a nice balance between salinity, dry vermouth and alcohol and then here whether we can taste that nice fresh crisp bite of Stolischnaya vodka. I'm going to empty out the extraneous ice into the well and then I'm going to strain. Now with our dirty vodka martini I'm going to double strain to remove any little bits of olive that we might have had in the glass. And with a dry vodka martini, I don't necessarily have to double strain, but I am going to strain it very close to the rim of the glass. The reason being that we've stirred out all of the oxygen in the drink, and what we don't want to do is introduce that back into the glass again. If you've done it right, both drinks should be fairly even, with the addition of the olive brine on the left for our dirty martini, and then a classic citrus twist across the top, and dropped into the glass for our five to one dry martini and olives for our dirty. Really important in terms of detail that we keep those olives in the fridge just so we don't heat that martini up once it reaches the customer's table. And that is the classic vodka martini with Stolischnaya.